this is the, the second part of our RJ45 video. Um, I had to split this one. In the first part, we did a RJ45 connector onto an internal CAT6 and an external CAT5. If you missed that one, I'll put a link up here and a link at the end. This video we're going to be looking at, this is a surface mount face plate, but a flush mount would be the same sort of thing that you do inside. You've just got a little bit more space on a, on a uh, surface mount. Same thing applies to if you want to use these, if you need to, to extend the cable. Uh, if you want damage or you need to repair it, you can use these. Ideally, you'd replace the cable, but sometimes you just can't do that. At the end of this one, we look at this cheap little tester. This won't tell you speed, but it will tell you that you've got the, the cores around the right way and that there's, uh, they're all connected. So it's obviously a good thing to test that before you install it, because you know it's good to go. You can just plug and play with confidence that you know, you've got these around the right way and, and they're all connected. So let's get into that. So if we look at this face plate now, the surface mount one, um, that's why I've done this external one with a RJ45 so we can test this, because this is more likely what you'd use in this rather than uh, an RJ45 connector. But however, very similar process. Strip the outer casing. Only this time we're gonna leave ourselves plenty of slack. So we pull that off. Cut the string, we don't need that. Right, so if you get your Cat5, strip that cable back. We're using B, so it's gonna be brown, brown and white, green, green and white, orange, orange and white, blue, blue and white. So if we get them in roughly in position where we want them, there's a green and orange and then blue. Now what we can do, we can untwist the wires, but leave it twisted this side. It keeps it together, keeps it neat. And we'll pull them through, but leave, leave enough length to work with. It's a little bit easier to deal with this stuff. If you've got a, an end you can grab hold of, but I'll show you what I mean. That's gonna live about there. So we'll untwist it from here. It's our brown, and then we'll bring the others all back to the same sort of imaginary line. Now you can do them all at once, or you can do them one at a time. Okay, right. As soon as you start getting them punched in, it becomes a lot easier to deal with. So start off with our brown and our brown and white, and then we're gonna use a punch down tool. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna put the actual cable into the connector and it does two things at once. It does that, but at the same time, it also snips off the excess. So make sure if you're using one of these, you've got it around the right, right way, otherwise you'll just cut the cable loose. You'll crimp it in and then cut it off, um, which isn't great, it's not ideal. And then get our cable in, pop it in, push it down. trying to get the cable to lay as evenly as I can and don't force it, just get it in first, then give it a push. Press it all on there. You see, that crimps it down like that. So now we'll just go along. Next one is green, green and white. So again, straighten them out, get them in the Hole. and this is where having a little bit of excess makes it just a little bit easier to deal with. I'll bring you in a bit closer for the next one. Pop that in there. There you go. Right, so the next one is orange, orange and white. So it goes there and there. Pump it down and then keep hold of that end. Just makes cutting it off a little bit easier, otherwise sometimes it can just bend it rather than cut it. So if you keep hold of it, and this one, in it goes. See that one's not gone down too well. So what we do there is you just give it another, that's it. 
and then the last one is blue, blue and white. So these have got a bit of a twist on them still, so we straighten them out. See, sorry I didn't have hold of that one. It's normally only the casing that hangs on, it doesn't cut through properly. And you should be able to just flick it off. There you go. Right. So that's our face plate or wall plate. And so this is a surface mount one. That's what I need for the job I'm doing. But for testing purposes, I've put this on the end and now we can try our tester and prove our cables, and then we'll prove that this is wired up properly. So if we test this now, this little tester, this will tell us that this is correct and that this is correct. So we use a known good lead, patch lead, um, plug that in this end, and then plug the other end in to our connector, and then we plug this into the other side of the tester and all we do is switch it on and it'll run through the light sequence hopefully you can make that out but what we're looking for is they're all going down the numbers are lining up if there was uh, a broken wire one of them wouldn't light up so they're all coming on they're all going down in sequence they're both going down together because if we had cross pairs you might see it jump now we know that that connector or face plates wired up right so we can install that knowing that that bit's all right but we can also test the leads that we made i've made a bit of a rig split these cables just to show how we can test it so obviously on site or in your house you're going to be having this plugged in at one end of the or in one room and possibly this in another so we'll split this up but again, you can still see if something's wrong because the numbers won't go down in sequence. If they're around the wrong way, they'll probably jump. Or if there's one missing, it, it won't light up. So we'll start off with, we'll just play with the orange wires. I've just joined the other ones together. We join these orange to orange. And the orange and white to orange and white. That should be enough. A tester, and what we should see is them going down in sync. So we know that as it is, they're wired correctly, albeit not pretty. If we disconnect one, there you go. See, number two didn't light up. I'll let it go around again. Missed number two, so that would tell you that. You've got a broken wire. See one and two aren't, aren't lighting up now. Now if we swap the orange, the orange and white. So we're miswiring them. That one swapped over. We should see now. See the one and the two. This is the master, this generates the signal, and the remote follows. So that's how you know if you've got the pairs around the wrong way. See, there's two in one. So we know that there's the wiring's wrong on that. And that's the beauty of this thing. There's no guesswork. Um, but you just, you have to be prepared to check both ends. Don't just assume, as we can see here, this is going one, two. So that look, all looks good. But at this end, we can see there's a problem. Hopefully you can see that it's a quite an easy skill and um, really, really useful to be able to do this stuff at home. Even if you're just using these little boxes or if you want to structure wire your house. Um, I say Wi-Fi is king at the minute, but there's still a definite place for this kind of stuff. I think. Hopefully you find this one useful. If you can like it, subscribe, help me grow the channel. I'll see you on the next one.